Guys, let's do a chicken wing feast with french fries, garlic knots, and a small kitchen fire. So we're gonna start with the chicken wings. I'm actually gonna boil mine. I like to do that, give them a nice simmer. This actually helps cut back on the cooking time and adds a lot of extra flavor at the end. Also helps to keep them super moist. So I add a little bit of chicken bouillon in there. That's gonna add the extra flavor and we're gonna let these go for about 15 minutes. While they cook, we're gonna start our french fries. So I've just rinsed off some russets and I'm gonna leave the skins on cut off the ends just so I can kind of square these up and I'm gonna go ahead and cut these now and I'm looking for a nice shoestring fry so I need a nice sharp knife I want to be able to cut these potatoes real thin and be real careful go ahead and just get them cut you could do thick fries too if it's easier for you it takes a few minutes extra to uh, cook them but you know whatever you like so I'm gonna go ahead and slice these really thin and then rather than try to do the whole stack at once I split it in half now I'm gonna just cut each half into my shoestrings. Real simple. Keep them lined up, cut those shoestrings. These are like a quarter inch by a quarter inch. It's perfect. They're absolutely the best fry to eat with a chicken wing, I think. So I get those all done. And then what I like to do is I put those in some water. That water is gonna start leaching some of the starch out of those and I'm gonna let them sit in that water for about 30 minutes. I get them all in there, move them around a little bit. Be sure you have a bowl big enough to cover all these because we don't want any of them to turn brown. If they're hitting the air, they're gonna start oxidizing. Set those aside. Only let those wings go until they're just cooked through, really about 10 or 12 minutes and they're gonna be done. Wings aren't too big. They don't take long to cook all the way through. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just set those out on a tray. I want them to completely dry off and I'm gonna let them sit there all afternoon until I'm ready to cook them later. Then we take our potatoes, we throw them in a strainer. I'm gonna rinse off any of that extra starch then I'm gonna let them just kind of sit there and drip dry for a second. Now this is a crucial step, you wanna do this. This is gonna help them get extra crispy when you fry them, getting rid of some of that starch. Say hi to my kitty Gus. All right, now we're gonna lay these out on a paper towel. I put towel on the bottom, I'll throw another towel on the top, just kind of press them dry, get as much of that water off as possible, and then I'll even let them sit there for another little bit, and it's time to fry these things. So. I'm gonna load up my pan with some oil. Now we're gonna double cook these. The first fry is gonna be at about 325 degrees. That's gonna allow us to just do what's called a blanch on them. And it's gonna kind of par cook them. So I got my thermometer here. I'm gonna make sure my oil is good. About 320. While I get everything ready, it's gonna go back up and we're good to go. Now watch this foam up. So guys, I pulled that off just in time. A little bit of oil did drip down in there and it did start a little fire. That oil is at its smoke point, 325 degrees. Any sort of flame or even that hot grill, that's enough to start it on fire. Now this could have been a very, very serious situation and I reacted quick enough and I handled it properly and I uh, wanna take a minute and talk with you guys about what just happened. So guys, I wanna take a time out here and talk about fire safety. I made two critical errors here and I know better and I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what happened so that hopefully you can prevent something like this happening in your kitchen because this could be disastrous. First off, I used brand new oil and there's nothing wrong with that, but when you, whenever you use new oil, the very first fry always fizzles up like that. It always does every single time. So you have to be very careful. You can't put too much oil in a pan because it's gonna fizzle up and go over the edge. I had maybe a little bit too much in there. My second critical mistake was I put too much, uh, too many french fries in. So I overloaded the pan. So when I overloaded the pan with brand new oil, it was a recipe for disaster. Now, fortunately, my years in the business, I reacted quickly and I've seen, this is not my first, uh, it's not my first grease fire that I've seen. So in reacting quick enough, I was able to move that pan. I saw it coming up. I knew for a fact it was going to go over. Had I let that go over and just start pouring down on that grill, the flames would have been out of control. It would have been fire extinguisher only to put that out. Instead, I was able to move the pan, just a little bit of oil spill. It had a small flame. I was able to actually blow it out. I gave a quick couple of blows. If that didn't do it, my next step was gonna to be to immediately go get some salt. Or guys, absolutely never put any liquid of any kind 
on a grease fire. So I was gonna grab some salt. The salt would immediately smother the fire and completely put it out. The salt is non-combustible. This is what you're gonna to wanna to use. Now, if that didn't do it, I would have grabbed my fire extinguisher. I have a fire extinguisher on hand just in case. And when working with hot oil, that's always a good idea to have a fire extinguisher around. And I was already thinking ahead to that point. So it's very important that you think fire safety when using hot oil and deep frying in your house. So I just wanna let you guys know, be careful. First fry, it's gonna fizzle up. Don't overload your pan. And remember, if you do get a little fire, salt is what you're gonna to wanna to use. If the salt doesn't work, you're gonna to wanna to get that fire extinguisher. So um, with that in mind, I, uh, save the day, let's cook some garlic knots. So for these, I'm just gonna use this pizza crust that I bought at the store. It's gonna work perfect. These aren't gonna be the best garlic knots, but they're gonna to totally work for what we're doing here today. So I'm gonna unroll that, slice it down the center, then I spun it sideways, and I'm kinda of just slicing these long strips. These are gonna be like little ropes, if you will. And we're simply gonna just take each one now and we tie it into a little knot. Just one quick little twist, throw that down, do the next. We get those all done. I have my pizza stone. It's heated up to about 475 degrees. I'm just gonna load that thing up, throw it in for about eight minutes or so, and those knots are ready. So here I have a mixture of garlic, butter, and olive oil, a little bit of herbs. It's real simple, there's no set recipe for it. So I'm gonna add a couple scoops to my garlic knots, throw on some Parmesan cheese, give that a nice toss, be sure they're all well coated. A Little bit more cheese, another couple tosses. You wanna get those all covered really well and that's it. Those knots are ready. Let's try them out and see how they are. Now, of course, you gotta have your ranch with them. I think that's the perfect uh, accompaniment to go with your garlic knots, so. Here we are, little dippity doo, cheers, a bite. Man, they were perfect. All right, the rest of them are going in the oven. Let's go ahead and get some chicken wings going. It's about that time and we're starving. So for the chicken wings, I'm gonna reheat that oil, same oil I used before. This time I'm gonna bring it up to about 350 degrees. And I'm gonna be careful now when I drop my wings in, I'm going one at a time. Although you notice this isn't fizzling up because it's not the first fry. So we'll go ahead and cook those off. It only takes about seven or eight minutes to get nice and crispy and golden brown like that. And that's perfect. We'll pull those out, drain some of that oil. We'll get the rest of them cooked off. We're gonna do our fries and the same thing, not fizzy up. We're gonna let those get nice and crisp and it's time to toss these wings in our sauces. I have two different sauces I'm doing today. So I'm gonna take the first batch of wings, we're gonna to toss it with a little bit more of that garlic, olive oil, herb, butter mixture, a couple little ladlefuls, give that a quick toss, and then we're gonna add in some lemon pepper. That butter acts like a glue, and that lemon pepper just sticks right on there. Then we're also gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese on this as well, and that's gonna be absolutely perfect. They're like little Parmesan, lemon pepper, garlic, butter wings. Guys, give it a shot sometime. This is a really good flavor on your wings. It's kind of a dry rub. Now next, we're gonna do a wet wing. So we're gonna pour those out, get another bowl. We're gonna throw those wings in there. This time we're going with the classic buffalo. And you can make your own buffalo sauce. This has a little bit of butter, a couple other little spices in it just to doctor it up a little bit. Give that a nice toss. Those are ready too. Throw those down on the pan. Man, I just wanna get in there right now. I mean, look at those, absolutely perfect. French fries are ready too. Throw those in a bowl, hit them with some salt. Give those a little tossy toss. Guys, we're ready. We've been cooking this all afternoon, just working on the process. We didn't burn down the kitchen. It's time to plate up some food. I'm gonna take a few of those buffalo wings. Take a few of those lemon pepper wings. I'm gonna get a big old scoop of those hand cut, super crispy shoestring French fries. Yeah, maybe two scoops. Grab me a couple of them garlic knots. Guys, we're good to go. Look at that. Dinner is served. So all you need now is a little bit of ranch classic condiment. I know some of you like the blue cheese. I'm a ranch guy myself. So I'm gonna start with that lemon pepper Parmesan. And I gotta tell you, the citrusy lemon on there, 
the garlic butter, the Parmesan, it all works so well. That is an absolutely amazing wing. And guys, lastly, we're gonna try the buffalo. And I knew for a fact this was gonna be the heat that I needed to complete this entire meal. Man, it's like a wing fest in my living room. What a treat. Thanks for watching. Cheers, everyone.